Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. Uh, just to explain last weekend and this weekend really quickly. Last weekend was a mechanical error. Today was my error. So there was no recording for last week's message or this week's message. But I'm going to sum up one little section of this week's message, and I may touch on ne on last week's if the Lord leads me to. But for right now, I just want to share with you how we are to keep our mind on the Lord. He will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him. And if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. So no matter what's going on in these last days, no matter what chaotic mess is happening, or what agenda is going on from the top to the bottom, if you know what I'm saying. Um, no matter how many mandates they come out with, the bottom line is God is in control. And you must stay in his face, stay in his word, and seek him, seek his guidance constantly, because he will tell you what to do. Now, this is where I find the body of Christ can sometimes be a little over the top, when it comes to faith, you can never have too much faith, but you can sin with it, believe it or not. You can use it to commit sin. And what I notice is there are a lot of people who are born again. They want to walk around saying, I'm covered by the blood. Yes, we are. But the other covering we have is God's wisdom. And whether there are lies going out there or not, we don't have to believe what they're saying on the media, but we do have to believe what God says. I'm going to share with you what happened a couple of years ago when we got that bad news about what was going around the world. You know what I'm talking about, the big C. And what the Lord led me to when I asked him, what should we do? Are we free to come and go? Are we free not to be bothered with the masks and the gloves and the this and the that and all the sanitation and all that mess that they're talking about? Is that just some kind of a game they're playing, a head game, or is this something we should follow? Is it something I should do? Let me know because I want to be wise and my only wisdom comes from you. Certainly doesn't come from me and I definitely don't trust the media. So, this is what God led me to in Isaiah chapter 26. Now, I had no idea what Isaiah 26 said. But when I asked the Lord to lead me to scripture, to an answer to that prayer that I just asked him, because I always want him to lead and guide me, I saw in my mind Isaiah 26. And when I got to this verse, I knew what God was telling me. Don't get out there and be no fool, calling it faith. And many of you born again brothers and sisters, you're turning your faith into foolishness because of presumptuous sin. Listen to this. This is Isaiah 26, verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Now, that's in the Bible. I didn't get that from Biden. I didn't get that from the medical industry, from Big Pharma. I didn't get that from any of that. I got that from the Word. Because God is my guide. He is the one whose steps I follow. So when God led me to that scripture, I knew what he was saying was, use good sense. Do what you've got to do to protect yourself because the plague is real. Some of the lies they're telling aren't. But I'm telling you, and I don't lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Remember that scripture too. God was letting me know, I want you to stay safe. So this is what you do. Stay in your chambers as much as possible till this calamity be overpassed. Now, I'm just paraphrasing that. I already read it to you. But the bottom line is we have to use wisdom. We have to seek God and acknowledge him in all our ways. You know, a lot of you are expecting God to work miracles of immunization. Supernaturally, you're going to be immune to everything. Supernaturally, you're going to have total protection. Let me tell you, baby, your biggest protection 
is not your immunity. Your biggest protection is not having money in your pocket. And your biggest protection is not having all kind of uh, loopholes in the, in the law. No, your biggest protection is obedience to what God tells you to do. Verbally, orally, through his spirit, through the unction of his Holy Ghost, or through his word, or even from godly counsel. Obedience is your safety and your protection. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So don't lean to your own understanding, baby cakes, because that could take you down a, a downward spiral. You see, your immunization is in obedient, obedience to the word of God. Listen to what he said in Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you, which they put on their doorposts, the blood shall be to you a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, here was the problem, though. Had they presumed upon God's protection through their faith in the almighty God and decided to go out for a midnight stroll, guess what? If they were one of the firstborn, they, or they were a firstborn of their household, they would have died as well. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you must obey God. There was no uh, jab there was no medical answer to the problem. The only answer to being protected from that plague was obeying God and staying inside behind the blood. And that's what keeps us the blood of Christ. And because of the blood of Christ, <coughs> we have supernatural protection when we naturally obey what God says. I just had to throw that in as patch two cents mixed with God's word. All right, let me finish what I'm saying here. Listen, that's why we are to keep our minds on things above, which is what I talked about today. We must keep our mind on things above, on purity, on truth, on honesty. On We have to keep our minds stayed on God. Because he's the one that will keep our minds, our spirits in total peace. He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. So listen, we have to learn to obey against our better judgment, believe it or not. Some of you are out there helping to spread this virus because you're too cool, you're too cute, you're too fine, you're too sexy to wear a mask, to wear gloves, to do whatever. Well, you go right on ahead. But what you're doing is you're taking many others with you because some banners through that you put your little snotty hand on. Somebody else is going to put their hand on to catch their balance. And they're going to take your germs to their household of five, six, or ten. And that may cost five or six or ten lives because of your presumptuous sin. Now, moving right along to some of the other things we dealt with, we have to remember when we start to get worried and fearful, and that's not what this is about, because God wants us to be of a sound mind. He doesn't want us to be burdened with fear and, and have our, our cages rattled and, and we're shaking at the knees out of, out of desperation, panic, and, and, and just out and out fear. No, he doesn't want us dealing with it because your brain is to function at a level of peace. Peace functions from faith. You hear me? But what do you believe in is my question. Because that could be the core problem right there. What are you believing in? Whose lie or whose truth or whose whatever are you believing in? That's where you have to draw the line. Where, who is your source? Let's put it like that. Who is your source? And I'm going to leave you with that one on that case. Now we're going to go back to last week. 
Last week, God was just talking about judging the churches. And I can see how that ended up being cut off because I'm sure that many, I mean, I'm sure many demons did not want God's people to hear that message. But the bottom line of the message was that many of you are out there playing tiddlywinks. You're cohabiting with sin and righteousness. You're, you're putting them all in the same bucket. You're mixing it up. What does Jesus say? A little leaven will leaven the whole lump. So you take a little lump, a little thing of leaven from a loaf that's got yeast in it, and you can put it in a loaf that doesn't have yeast in it and knead it up and mix it up real good and let it sit. The whole loaf is going to plump up because it plumps up the whole loaf. That's what sin does. You put a little dab of sin here, a little dab of sin there, you open up portals for demonic infiltration, and then you wonder why all hell is breaking loose in your life, and your family, on your job, and your finances, and your health. You wonder what's going on. Now, this isn't for everybody, because Satan attacks righteous people, and it's not based on their sin at all. But my point is, why open the door and make it easy for Satan to attack you? When he attacks you, he ought to be trespassing. And the only way for him to trespass is because he's on holy ground. Is your lifestyle holy ground? That's what I want to ask you. Is your lifestyle holy ground? Hmm. Does he have a right to be there? Question. What's your answer? So the other part of this is God is sick and tired of seeing what the churches are doing. We are not that great of an example, to be honest with you. And there are things happening in the body of Christ. God is not blind. He's not deaf. He's not stupid. But some of you treat him as if he is. Because you come out from under the sheets of your other lover the night before, get off freshened up, get up in the morning and attend church the following morning, be it Saturday or Sunday. And you're coming to church, doing your church duty and serving, quote unquote, the Lord and just doing your thing. And you're not at the altar repenting. You're not in the pastor's office asking for prayer because you've grown weak. You're very comfortable because as far as you're concerned, you got no well attitude. You know, whatever, whatever. I got needs. Well, see, God's got needs too. And he needs his people to obey him. You do not want to be considered the church of Laodicea, lukewarm. You don't, you know, straddling the fence, sitting on this side and on that side. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do the fence walk, do you? So be very careful about that. Please be very careful because God does not play. Uh, he gave me a dream years ago. I did a video on it about feces found in the church, in the church seats, in the pews, and at the altar of all places where we are to repent, pray, and all that, feces was all over the altar, droppings everywhere. And the trip was nobody in the church was thinking about cleaning it up. They were too busy trying to put things away and go home or go to the game or go to the restaurant, whatever they were going to do. The sad part about that was nobody, not even the pastor, he was too busy trying to work on his itinerary for next week. So I'm trying to find something to clean up. This was a dream. And the Lord was showing me the feces is the sin. The feces is what I am seeing in the body of Christ. The church is messy. And I beg of you, brothers and sisters, let's clean house. It's time. Don't you think? 